Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. The Logitech C920 debuted nearly six years ago, way back in January of 2012. Since its launch, it has been the go-to USB webcam when it comes to both price and performance. But what do you do when you outgrow it and you want a little bit more versatile webcam? Well, if you're Kurokesu, you remove the lens, engineer, and mill an aluminum housing complete with a CS lens mount. This is the Kurokesu C920 enclosure kit. By the way, thank you for sending this all the way over from Lithuania for a review. As mentioned, this is a complete housing replacement for the venerable Logitech C920. First impressions, the machining is absolutely beautiful. Every edge has a slight bevel and the matte black finish is very smooth and very consistent throughout. You can receive this kit in one of two forms. In my case, I received the housing, USB port replacement, an infrared low pass filter, and then disassembled the C920 myself. There is a fair bit of fine solder work to be done, and if you choose to go this route, it includes scraping a new ground pad off the rear of the C920 PCB. If this is your first go around with this kind of solder work, I recommend option two, which is a pre-done kit referred to as the C920 Rework. This comes ready to work straight out of the box. I also received a CS mount 2.8 to 12 millimeter lens with variable zoom, focus, and a three bladed aperture. It fits snugly and securely into the housing. Both optical zoom and manual exposure on the camera adds a new level of versatility to an already great sensor. For nearly the past month, I've been using the Kurokesu kit on Talking Heads live shows, including our on location stream last month. It's let me place the camera on a tripod at a comfortable distance away and keep perfect focus and has added a slightly better depth of field overall to the image. Most of my use for webcams is recording live shows through OBS or time-lapse footage when working on longer projects. An unexpected surprise of this kit is the incredible close focus distance. When I received this kit, I tried to capture adequate footage of the soldering and assembly to create a tutorial video, but was unable to move my camera close enough to get a shot without blocking all of my light. If I had access to this camera before I had to put this camera together, I would have had some usable footage. I'm sure you will see some macro video use in upcoming videos. With the camera as small as it is now, I can put it nearly anywhere out of the way and still capture a high quality image. So once the camera's together, what's it like to use? Well, one major advantage is you're not modifying the original C920 board or software. The computer sees it just like it's always seen it before, just without autofocus this time around. There are a few downsides to this kit, and it's actually an inherent problem when capturing images off a sensor that's so small. Unless you have a spectacular lens, edge sharpness falls off, and pretty quickly. Don't get me wrong, in my testing, the image remains sharper further away from center than the stock lens, but it's not a miracle worker. The 2.8 to 12 millimeter lens's variable aperture allows for a fairly deep focus plane, but if you're in need of a pleasant looking bokeh in your background, this is not the lens you're looking for. Unless you like those hokey shaped filters from the 80s, every ball of light in the background turns into a triangle thanks to the simple three bladed aperture. Not great, but again, it's up to you if it's worth the wider focus range. Aside from that, all the positives of the C920 are still present. For a webcam, it has very good color reproduction and dynamic range. It's still able to capture 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And using the camera is plug and play in most cases, as there's no special software or drivers to fuss with nowadays. So time for a little practical demonstration. The image on your left is a stock C920 lens. The image on your right is the C920 rework kit at the approximate focal length of what the stock lens is. So we can get an apples to apples comparison. Now you're probably looking at these and going, Jeff, I kind of prefer the image on the left. And I kind of agree with you. Uh, it, the image on the left is a good image and you'll notice the image on the right, the rework kit, there's some barrel distortion going on here. Uh, and that's a natural consequence of working with a sensor so small with these type of lenses. Uh, however, I will point out that the image on the right, which is the rework kit, the colors are a little bit flatter. Uh, they're actually a little bit more true to life. There's The highlights are a little lower, the darks are a little lighter, which means you're gonna be able to do better post-processing or even better filter uh, adjustment in these images. Uh, these are not color corrected at all. This is just the stock settings coming into the computer. But again, one of my main points to using this camera is the versatility of it. It's, it's not necessarily take it out of the box and you get the best results every single time. It's that you can use it in many more situations than you would the stock C920. Here is that same image from the same angle, but taken at the 12 millimeter focal length from this new lens. You can see how much tighter the image is and the barrel distortion is gone at this focal length. 
Here's that same camera angle, but this time from a 2.8 millimeter focal length. Now, obviously there's some barrel distortion going on here. We've gone completely fish-eyed. My estimates put this as almost a 160 degree field of view. Again, this camera is about versatility, about being able to take this camera and put it in situations you normally would not be able to use a C920. This tripod is only eight inches from the front of this desk. We're completely usable. It's not the greatest looking image in the world, but I'm able to get a good quality image from very, very close or very far away, as you saw on the 12 millimeter focal length. Audio capture works as well as it did before through the microphone cutout grills on the front of the camera. And gone is the standard five foot USB cable that was hard lined in, replaced with a USB 2.0 mini B port, allowing for much shorter or longer cables if necessary. In the end, you're gonna get better results from a more versatile camera than you had before. The C920 kit as shown here with the infrared low pass filter will run you about $95 after shipping. Any lenses you need would be in addition to this. I think it's absolutely worth that for the options this camera gives you over a stock C920. But at the end of the day, it really depends on how you use the camera. If you're like me and starting to push the limits of a traditional webcam or simply want to use it in settings and spaces you can't currently, I think this is well worth the investment. So what about you? Do you have a use case that I haven't thought of yet? Let me know down in the comments. Also, check out the video description for a link to the Kurokasu website where you can buy this kit as well as other products and accessories they offer. Also, if you have some other shopping to do, don't forget about my Amazon affiliate code. Just click the link and do your holiday shopping. You'll be helping out the channel while checking some things off your list. And finally, after weeks of teasing it, the Threadripper build is coming up next. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. I promise it's gonna be pretty great. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.